Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and today's episode is one of those good show-and-tell episodes. And today, I'm going to go over some more art books. So before we begin, I want to remind you to go down below, click like, and click subscribe. If you like, you can leave a comment below. You know, YouTube always likes those uh, things to help the algorithm. And uh, if you'd like to support me financially, I also have the uh, super thanks button I've activated as well. There's the uh, links below for the PayPal and the Patreon. Now, I do have a special section of episodes uh, available to the subscribers and to the supporters of the channel. Uh, these are basically episodes of things that I cannot post on YouTube here and they, you know, has uh, you know, special content that uh, YouTube does not like. I have all the episodes of uh, the history of fan anime put into a spreadsheet. It's put into uh, sort of book chapter form order. So again, uh, all the related episodes are put together for you. Uh, much better and much easier to uh, use than uh, trying to use the uh, YouTube uh, search algorithm. As well as also have uh, another file uh, dedicated to all the special episodes uh, that are not available on YouTube. Again, available to all the subscribers and the uh, supporters for the channel. Okay, so again, check that out. Links are below. Now, in today's episode, we're going to go over some art books. So again, going through my archives, I've uh, came across another stack of uh, art books of uh, particular notes. So again, we're going to go through those ones and uh, see what uh, cool things that we see in some of these art books that we used to have. So without further delay, let's begin. The next book is this uh, what they call a mini mook. Okay, so not a uh, not a book, but the mini book. So it's a mook. Okay, so a mini mook, <laughs> if you will. And this is for a series called Metal Jack. So again, kind of like the you know an offshoot of like the Borg Man idea. You know, the concept of like the armored police type of thing, right? Uh, in, uh, in in transformable suits. Um, so again, you, know, you kind of uh, it's a smaller size book again with a kind of little. Uh, you know, neat sort of pictures and that kind of stuff going over the episodes, going over the different characters and that kind of stuff. Some of the conceptual sort of early stories to that sort of thing. Um, and some more flesh out of the stories. Then it goes over the characters and how they sort of go, draw over them and whatnot. And then the mechs and whatnot. Now the fun thing about with this thing is that, or the, you know, the, the, the inside joke of course uh, on, on this is that, uh, you know, these are just ordinary guys, right? Um, just like, uh, like Borg Man. And in, um, you know, the transformation in order to get into their, uh, you know, in, into their mecha suits for Borgman is Borg get on, right? Well, in Metal Jack, they kind of follow the same idea, and they go, Jack on, right? Let's go! Silver! Blue! Oh! Jack on! So then, your, your concept of, well, okay, if Jack on is the, to put the armor on, what do you think they have to say to take the armor off? So, uh, yeah, so I'll leave you with that, and, um, you know, take a go. Metal Jack, the mini mook. 
The next book is The Lost Universe. So again, this is another one of these uh, magazines done by Dragon Magazine, okay? Uh, Megumi Hashibara does the, opening th uh, does the opening theme song as well as she does one of the lead characters again. So again, very, very uh, popular, you know, because uh, you know, at this time uh, Slayers was the really big thing. And so another sort of more futuristic version of this again. A nice little you know, picture of all the major characters and that kind of stuff in here. Okay, so again, Lost Universe, uh, you know, nice series. I, I thought it was really good. Good. You know, this is uh, one of the series where they're just starting to integrate, um, you know, CG with uh, you know actual you know anime and that kind of stuff. Uh, so in many ways, it, it, it kind of reminds me of basically Slayers in Space, if you if you want to put it that way. Um, yeah. Here you go. This is this is the uh, character that uh, that uh, Megumi Hashibara plays, uh, Millennium Fair Nocturne, and uh, Connor Vorfi. This is your basically your AI. So it's kind of uh, really neat there. So you know, kind of a kind of a golf horse, uh, you know, caddy feel, right? So the, the relationship diagram and sort of the mechanical gra uh, you know, the graphics. So this is i.e. the you know all all the uh, you know the CG rendered parts of the uh, of the series that they did. Um, which is really kind of you know, kind of cool, how they kind of sort of half integrated the anime and the and, and the CG with this. You know, really kind of early for that, and then you know the sort of the story going through that. So again, this is sort of to sell, help you summarize the episodes. Again, at this time it wasn't so hard to get the episodes in order because again DVDs and and, and laser discs were, were still very very easy to get for this series, and so it uh, uh, you know. Wasn't as important as say, for example, Heavy Metal Elgheim, where you really, really needed the episode guide, or else you you're just gonna, like getting totally lost. Okay, so here's what I mean a, a little more of that sort of half CG, sort of half you know sort of shade coloring that that they do cell drawing. So it really made the you know the the, the gradient um, cut fill that they do there uh, on some of the art drawings was really 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 nice. And of course, you know, you know, all the different sort of hand drawings and that kind of stuff for all the various different characters um, in the series, as well as the ships. You know, very detailed you know, of, of how the gun and the stuff is, is all is all written out, which is really kind of neat. Um, there, uh, sort of the, the the ship, the interiors, the the backgrounds and the scenes, very very uh, you know drawn out and fleshed out. Okay. And of course, then the various information about the actual part of the series again that helped fill in some of that extra information. Okay, so really nice sort of uh, reference book for the series, uh, Lost Universe. Okay. Okay, the next one is uh, Princess Maker. Okay, one and two, and then this is sort of a, one of these uh, you know computer guidebooks. So the Princess Maker is one of these type of games where you know. Uh, you have the princess, okay, and then you are in charge of doing things to her to basically, you know, raise her up to be a princess. And so again, the interview with the uh, the character designer and whatnot, and lots of nice pictures of, of you know, the uh, of of the character and the design information. So again, as Princess Maker goes, you know, you basically uh, uh, interact and do things to the actual character and try to you know raise her up to be the princess. So they have various different interview with the, the you know, character designer and the game maker, um, and different scenarios and that kind of stuff. And what this book is supposed to help you do, it's it's supposed to you know give you uh, you know tips and designs on how to get to the final ending of the series. Right? So if you want, uh, for example, you know the the wedding type of uh, you know uh, ending, then you would you know do various different steps in order to get there. You can get her as you know a warrior. Um, you know, of different kind of styles, magic user, that kind of stuff. You can be you know, the, the priestess, you know, the artist, uh, the dancer, you know, things like that. You can, you know, you can make her go uh, all these different routes and whatnot. And so the idea is, is that, you know, to help you, um, you know, get to and guide you to that, this will allow you to, to get to the uh, the different parts and the different endings as you're trying to do, and you can also get through all the various different costumes as you. Okay, so again, this is how to get to the different um, parts, 
they sometimes lay it out in a table for you, so the, so that will help you um, you know ma navigate the game and, and navigate the options properly. Uh, the character files. So again, this is, helps you de de describe all the characters that you meet. A little bit of you know background information for each of the various different uh, encounters that you do. I guess you can say if, if you're doing like Dungeons and Dragons, this is your monster manual or your uh, NPC manual. And of course, the map for both. Uh, it should be yeah, it should be the map for. Um, the world, so this is the map they use for Princess Maker 2. So it's a nice little uh, sort of game. Again, the reason why these books are really impo important is that at this time, if you don't, if you get stuck in the game and you can't get her to be the princess, well, there's no way you can, you know, go online to figure out, you know, how you have to do it, right? You actually have to, um, you know, you have to actually get a book like this and then follow these instructions on, on like okay you, you know you, you know when you get to this part you answer this way when you get to this one you answer this way this one you answer this way and that way this is how the, the you know the, the, the correct sequence of uh, things you need to do in order to get that ending right so uh, you know sure I mean there are things like gamefaqs.com and whatnot and whatnot but again it's really hard to do for a non-english game and things that require some visualization. So again, these books are extremely valuable for that particular purpose uh, at this time of uh, you know this time of gaming, right? Because again, you can't um, go and watch a YouTube video and see how the guy you know gets her to princess. You know, you need this kind of a book. So, Princess Maker one and two. The next book is this one here. It's called uh, it's the the Kanishi Sonoda, uh period book. Okay, now this is a uh, kind of an a little bit of an art book, a little bit more of a, of a comic story book, okay? So again, you know, a little bit of artwork, you know, uh, you know from that. And basically it has extended stories for um, Golf Horse and whatnot, okay? So this was a you know, the story called Privates Live. So I guess, you know, the, you know, the, the, the secret story behind, you know, the, the various different, um, you know, characters if they'd ever you know got into like civilian life if will or whatnot and so it so kind of extends the story of golf wars and you know, what would happen if they you know end up in like you know so say you know normal life as it were right so here it is just sort of different uh, parts of the story and whatnot to that again okay and it covers a you know a couple different uh, angles of uh uh, uh, you know, Golf Wars, Golf Wars 2, uh, you know, Earth Chapter as well, okay. This is where it comes in, these, you know, these nice pictures um, from um, Cyber Comics, okay. This is where some of these, uh, uh, these stories kind of were printed in, and then they use these ones as the covers for those, uh, for those magazines. So where, so where these, you know, kind of side stories come, here's a, you know, here's a Freddy sort of reference there. Um, and, uh, just basically how, how, uh, Caddy and her sisters and that kind of stuff, uh, <laughs> come around, you know, come around, there, there's, there's, again, uh, more of that, okay? And so here's a, a Bubblegum Crisis, uh, alternate story, okay? And they basically, you know, laid all that kind of out in, a, in another type of, uh, you know, alternate line thing. thing. Again, this, this helps you, you know, again, if you're really interested in the series and you want to see, uh, like an alternate story, you know, some other stories and that kind of stuff, uh, using the same characters and whatnot, this is really great um, stuff that he had thought about, right? And again, some more uh, cell work and that kind of stuff, so, uh, concepts and that whatnot in there, as well as some more character sketches done by him. So this is really kind of a neat sort of magazine to, to see some of the other stuff that was available uh, from him, okay? So, uh, he's just doing this, uh, period. Okay, this is uh, Katsura Mazakasu's illustrations, okay? And it's a kind of a, a, a plastic jacket, okay, that holds three books in it, okay? You can kind of see it's a really kind of a thick thing with actual three books inside this this casing, right? Otherwise, it's a very plain looking sort of uh, book here. But if you kind of lift off this piece here, okay, and it's a really really nice book. Is it? I think it, you know, if I look at the yen price here, it's uh, three thousand three hundred and thirty-three. So. 
$33.33 in the U.S. is when the, how much this was when they first originally released this sort of, you know, dust sort of jacket. So you can see, you know, it's, um, you know, a very sort of clear jacket with, you know, with, with this uh, sort of little thing written on it here, okay. Um, clear that. But uh, it, it has actually three different books, okay. L, R, and SL, or Shadow Lady, okay. So we'll kind of go through it in order here uh, from book one. Book one is L, and the L stands for the lady side or lover side, okay. And this artist is, is again well known for um, um, uh, IS or uh, is ice and um, video girl eye is the other one that he's really, really known for. So again, really nice pictures for all the manga covers and whatnot that he did. Uh, the inset pictures and that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's all the various different pictures for Video Girl Eye. And again, you'll recognize these as a lot of the covers of the mangas, the CDs, um, some of the DVD covers and that kind of stuff. Uh, illustration artwork and that kind of stuff he does for that series. But uh, yeah, really nice. Um, nice sort of soft colors for a lot of the things that he does. Uh, in that series, okay, and a little bit of manga at the very end, just kind of kind of kind of touch some of the, you know, you know, sort of like an extended story, if you will, you know, so throw that at the very end there, and so it's a really nice book for uh, the L side, okay. Now the next one is is R, okay. <laughs> you think that's left and right, I guess, but you know, okay, so anyway, so this one he puts it as as the hero side, okay. And again, a little bit of the stuff from like a, a, a wingman, okay? Cause that's another thing that he does uh, illustrations for. Uh, and so, really, you know, some of the nice soft kind of, kind of stuff, a lot of Sentai type of stuff there. He also does the anime DNA Squared. Again, if you haven't seen DNA Squared or, uh, uh, you know, Video Garai, definitely these are really, uh, you know, very good and very short animes, right? You don't even have to, because they're all like six episodes long each. And so it's a really nice story uh, to them. Uh, again, lots of artwork for Shadow Lady, okay? And at the end of this, he has a, a little bit of an interview, which he talks about, uh, you know, different, different types of topics and that kind of stuff. And, you know, special messages and that kind of stuff. Okay? Uh, little uh, people... Um, leave messages including Toriyama, Akira Toriyama, okay, so the, you know, the Dragon Ball guy. Um, um, all, they all are leaving different uh, comments and that kind of stuff uh, based on, uh, on, on whatnot and all his different works. So again, very, very well respected person and uh, you know, something you can definitely check out. And that's in the um, R book, okay. And the last one, of course, is the uh, the SL, which is the Shadow Lady, okay, and that's his most recent uh, sort of work there. And uh, in this book, again, a little bit of a you know, manga, you know, colored manga, and that kind of stuff uh, as an extension to uh, that series, of course, that he that he works on here. And at the end, more really nice sort of illustrations and that kind of stuff, uh, different chapters and layouts for that. So really nice. So again, a very, very, you know, beautiful laid out uh, book series uh, for this uh, particular artist. A beautiful book, uh, collection of things for the Katsura Masakazu. Okay, so again, do check his stuff out. The next one is another really beautiful book. It is called the uh, Utena Illustrations, okay, by Chiho Sato, okay. And this again, nice sort of, it's a, it's a larger size book as you can, you can see. And it's in its own little specialized jacket, okay? Um, not that expensive. It's like 2,500 yen, so about $25 US when it first came out. But you can see it's a nice sort of jacket, and then you, you kind of slip it out, and it comes out into a separate sort of booklet, okay? So, or, or fold. And it comes out into a nice sort of book like this, okay? And this book contains all the various different illustrations for... Um, Utena. Now the other nice thing is this one, is, this book, these pages aren't flimsy. These are actually really kind of, you can kind of flick that. It actually is a really kind of a hard cardboard, right? 
you can just kind of feel the, the thickness of this. So, so the pages don't actually you know, flex that much, right? So again, uh, different illustrations for Utena, okay? So you can kind of see, uh, yeah, they're, like I said, they're really nice hard-based things. You, you see, they, they didn't print on the other so opposite side of these things because they're really, um, you know, it's like, it's like a giant postcard book almost. Okay, so again, very, very nice, sort of, you know, what sort of nice soft watercolors on some of them. You know, you know portraying different characters, the, you know, of course, the big relationship, you know, with Utena in that series. Again, this is one of these, you know, sort of landmark breaking series, um, you know, designed for the female uh, audience, right? And, uh, you know, it really, you know, game with, with, you know, with that push for, you know, Sailor Moon and whatnot. Uh, there we go. They yeah, yeah, to get other animes and that kind of stuff, which is you know, designed for. Yeah, so really nice. There you go. So, the illustration book for Utena by Chiho Saito. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, having a little sneak peek at some of these uh, art books that were really, really valuable to us. Uh, you know, in, in the early days. Because this is sort of the only way that we got, you know, the artwork and the, uh, the you know, the inside information on a lot of these animes that we follow. Because again, you know, you know uh, the internet is not the way it was, and even trying to get, uh, you know, high resolution pictures and and images and that and whatnot uh, was next to impossible uh, without the use of these kind of books. So again, I hope you found that really insightful. Stay tuned for some more cool things from the archives. All right. So until next time, I will. See you again.